Well, hello, good afternoon. I am Natasha Davis. I am your host this afternoon for our Power Hour webinar focused on advancing the brand of your healthcare organization. So I wanted to take a few minutes just to make sure that we are all on the same page regarding healthcare. And oftentimes uh, people misunderstand what healthcare uh, is and healthcare is a business. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the key things and learn a few tools about branding, especially in healthcare and, and driving home to make sure that the organization has an impactful brand. And like I said, I'm Natasha Davis. I'm the host uh, of this webinar, Advancing Your Healthcare Brand. And I am also the chief branding strategist here at Impact Branding, where we focus on boosting the impact of your brand and making sure your brand does have a lasting impact. Our niche market is in healthcare, and we also serve other industries as well, uh, real estate, restaurant, food and beverage, hospitality, as well as cosmetology. So today, let's go ahead and get right into it, and I hope you have your pen and papers up so you can capture some information, but I wanted to share a little bit about branding and what branding is, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see the presentation that we have, and if you have any questions, you can go ahead and post it into the chat room, and we'll go ahead and answer them for you, and we will um, get those answers to your questions. Okay, so let's go ahead and share the screen. Okay, I'm hoping you should be able to see my screen at this point. Okay, does everyone see the screen? All right, great. So let's start from the beginning. So I wanted to just kind of touch bases with you, and we're going to talk a little bit about the power of branding and what branding really is, and also understanding the key behind branding. So brand and branding, it's two different things, so let's just break it down real quick. So the brand is how you're remembered. It's, it's looking at you, the company, and what you look like in the marketplace, and that's the big thing. How do you look in the marketplace, and what is the marketplace saying about your organization? The next thing to understand with the brand of the company is that it is a long-term strategy, and I know many of you already know that. We have a few CMOs and um, chief HR directors and so forth on, on the webinar, so you understand that it's a long-term strategy. However, there's four particular brands to every single company, regardless of the industry, regardless of the organization, regardless of who you serve. And these four brands that your company needs to be aware of and to cultivate would be the personal brand. What's the personal brand um, of the organization and of the people? So the personal brand is going to be the people. How are the people positioned? And has your organization been able to convert your personal brand, which is your people, into actual brand ambassadors. And that's the big struggle that some organizations have is not, they haven't really accomplished the goal of converting the staff and the employees into brand ambassadors. And that's a lot of things that we do at Impact Branding as we come in and we make that shift and make that transition. So that's one of the brands that you want to look at cultivating for your company when we're advancing the brand of healthcare. The next type of brand that every company should cultivate is the product brand or service brand, right? So you got the product brand and the service brand. Now the product brand is different from the service brand because if you have a product, you have a service. And if you have only a service-based business, you eventually will have products. So there are two different type of brands that you want to cultivate. You have a product brand that you need to cultivate and then the service brand. If you have a product, you have to have service around it. So some of the products in healthcare may very simply be, okay, you know, maybe they need to access some online uh, resources or some tools uh, from the, the organization. The service is how are they accessing it? What's the tool? And we're going to talk a little bit about that um, towards the end, um, pulling it all together. So you have your personal brand, the people, the product brand, that's self-explanatory, and the service brand, which is self-explanatory. How does the service get delivered? And what do people experience once they access your service? 
The fourth type of brand every company needs to cultivate and pay attention to is the is the company brand. So you have the people side and you have the company side. So overall, what does the company uh, brand look like, stand for, and represent in the marketplace? And so your brand contributes to the business model and building out the business model. So again, the brand is a long-term strategy and it's how you're remembered and looked at in the marketplace. And so the four brands that you want to look at overall is kind of look at the company over the spectrum and say, you know, what's our personal brand look like? What does our product brand look like? What does our service brand look like? And what does our company brand look like? Are we batting a thousand? Are we looking really good there? So let's shift over to branding. Now, branding builds the brand. Now, branding is going to be the decisions you make, the actions you take, and the type of uh, marketing activities you do in order to make your brand recognizable in the marketplace. So it's the decisions you make and the actions you take. That's branding. And so branding creates the solid relationship between you and your customers or your patients. And so that's the key thing. When you're looking at branding, what decisions are you making and what choices and actions are you taking? And it has to tie back to, are we building a solid, solid relationship between us and our customers, which is our patients? What are we doing? Our stakeholders, the community, what are we doing? What decisions are we making and have we done that well? And so you want to look at making the position of your brand. And so brand positioning is uh, three main three main branding positions that you want to accomplish. And when you position yourself in the marketplace, it is going to drive the branding. What do I look like in the marketplace? What are we doing when people see us and people hear us and people experience us? What are they feeling? And is it what we want it to be? So the three main branding positions uh, that you want to take a look at and examine would be visual branding. How do we look when people see us, when our customers see us, when our patients see us, how do we look? What's the experience that they get when they see us? Okay. The emotional branding. What do they feel when they experience our company, our organization, our hospital, our clinic, our services, our staff? What is the feeling they have? Is it good? Is it exhilaration? Is it bad? Is it fear? You know, because a lot of people are always already fearful of healthcare. So what do they feel? And if we're getting a, uh, a survey or just kind of temperature gauge in the community and you're they're not having a good feeling you have to tighten up that brand the emotional branding part of the organization auditory branding the third branding position that you have to cultivate is auditory branding when people hear the name of your facility your organization your company your services what are they experiencing how are they reacting? So again, you have four types of brands to any company and you have three branding positions that you have to cultivate when you are really looking at advancing your the brand of your organization and really making a global footprint and saying, you know what, we take, we take pride in our company and our organization. We take pride in our brand and we want to make sure we do have a lasting impact. And so people sometimes misinterpret and organizations misinterpret what branding and a brand really is. You know, it gets sidetracked with, it's just the logo, the website, graphic designs, you know, pretty colors and things like that. And that is so, uh, it's, it's, it's a piece of it, but that's not all of it. Branding has to look at the quality the benefits, the service, the impression that's given, um, the cleanliness, the customer service, the name, you know, remember we talked about when they hear the name, what happens to them? You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm nervous or, oh my gosh, that's the best place to go. What happens? So branding has to do with everything. Branding is the people. When your staff goes out and they have your ID on and it says, I am a, a, a nurse or a doctor or a technician, or I work in um, the janitorial services, or I work in the food and the kitchen area, what happens what are they doing in the community because your staff is essentially your brand ambassadors the entire team your brand ambassador so what happens it can't stop at the executive level it has to drill down all the way down all the way down it has to drill down so we look at branding for the organization for the entire organization for all of the people and making sure that there's trust inside and outside of the organization and that is huge 
So just like any other organization and any other company and any other industry, you want to make profitable moves. You want to make profitable decisions and you want to have a profitable brand. The days where, you know, it's enough just to say I'm a hospital, those days are gone. You know, between the different kinds of certifications and accreditations and recognitions and um, all the different accolades and the surveys and the, you know, quantitative metrics that have to be met, all of those things that come into place, it is required that hospitals and healthcare are made making profitable marketing moves and we're making profitable decisions. And so in the midst of doing all of this, in this very noisy, noisy world, you have to find your place in the community because people are going online consumers, patients, everything. They're going online and they're trying to find out. They're going to forums and they're going on social media. We'll talk a little bit about that. And they're looking for feedback. They're looking to find out. You tell me about your experience. It's not enough for the hospital to say we're number one. And it's not enough to say, well, we're accredited here and we have Jayco and Magnet and, you know, ISO and all that good stuff because the, the marketplace, the patients, the consumers, very few of them even care about that. They want to know about the experience. My friend, my family member, my neighbor, my coworker went to this hospital, went to this facility, went to this clinic. What happened? How was it? How did it go? Did you feel taken care of? You know, were you respected? Do you trust them? Would you go, you know, these are the conversations. So we have to reduce the conversation or bring it down to a level where the consumer or the patient then rise. Because we, as, as we all know, without the patient, there is no hospital, there is no clinic, there is no urgent care, there's no doctor's office, right? So for profitable marketing moves, when you're doing that is you want to think about, uh, and there's an acronym that's used in our industry called ADA, and you want to think about the moves you're making. Are you attracting the attention in this noisy world? Have you attract their attention to let them know, hey, we are the healthcare organization for you. We're here for you. We're going to help you, not hurt you. Come to us and we'll take care of you. Okay. Does the insurance company understand that as well? That organization, you know what their help they don't hurt. They make they make the right decisions. They do the right thing. So now you have less of a microscope that's always coming down because they're saying this organization has built a brand that stands on integrity, that stands on giving the best care and reducing it errors and, and waste and things of that nature, right? So are we attracting the right attention? Does the does your company, does your organization spark the right type of interest? Are you sparking interest in the decisions you're making and the marketing moves that you're making? And did you create a desire for your organization, for your foundation, for your business? Did you create the desire for people to come to you? I am sick. I'm going there because I need to be taken care of. They're going to help me. They're not going to hurt me. Okay. And then the next thing, did you deliver a strong call to action, to let them know that you are here, to let them know that I am here for you. I'm going to make it happen. Uh, you know, a lot of organizations have done a great job at this. You know, non-healthcare organizations have taken on ADA and have put a lot of energy behind it because they understand that in this day and age and in this world, in this very driven technology, right? We're, we're driven by technology in this particular world, you have to make profitable marketing moves and we have to you know, pull back and push back and say, okay, what do our patients and consumers want? Where are they and where are they getting their information from? They're not coming to necessarily the hospital website to get initial information. They're coming after the fact, after they've gotten information on side. And so you want to think about that, you know, technology companies, you know, like, um, you know, like our Nikons and our, our Microsoft and our Apple and our Googles, they take ADA very seriously, you know, um, credit card companies, they take it seriously, Coca-Cola's, you know, Starbucks, you know, they take it seriously. They want to know, we got to make sure they're talking real good about us out there. It's not enough for us to talk about good about, good about ourselves, but they got to do it, right? They're going to be the driving force behind our brand and behind how well we do. And so when we think about what's driving what, hospitals will need both. You need relationships to drive the brand and you need the brand to drive the relationship. And so a lot of, when we look at it, we got to look back and say a lot of our decisions sometimes are made on one or the other, but at Impact Branding, we work with our clients to make sure that it's driven by both B2B and B2C. 
our clients have learned how to transition over to have relationships to drive the brand and then they also have the brand loyalty driving relationships you know one organization I and I can think about that does this very well is McDonald's okay and I say this all the time you know McDonald's has done such a phenomenal job at uh, what's driving what because what they found out is that we need both you don't need one or the other but in this day and age you need both and McDonald's have they have babies in the womb that are already attached to the golden arches and the smell of you know the the fries they're already attached and so we got to think about that from healthcare. How do we get our community attached to the healthcare organization from the moment of, of conception, really, all the way through? When that child is born, that generation, you want to be able to hold that family from beginning all the way down. You want generational lock in for your healthcare organization that that family comes to us regardless. And um, there's a few hospitals I know of across the states that have accomplished that regardless of what happens. I mean, generationally, that's where they go. And so you want to look at how do we drive that? How do we make sure that our relationship will drive loyalty to our brand? And how do we make sure that the brand will create a loyalty for our relationships? And um, there's very strategic ways in which you do that. That you can start in internally you go externally and then you pull it all together and um, you know that's exactly what we do here at impact brand and like I said we boost the impact of your brand making sure that we are accomplishing the goal which is to have a lasting impression right and so you want to make the connection this is simple but it's so powerful and I think sometimes in healthcare we get uh, very inflated and we get so bogged down in the numbers that we forget to look at some of the basic things and the basic things is you got to do these three things you got to make the connection visibility credibility and outreach that's it that is how you're gonna drive your brand that's how you're gonna boost the impact of your brand that's how you're gonna create generational connection brand equity on a generational level visibility credibility and outreach you have to be known you have to be respected and you have to be recommended that's what we're all going that's what we're all striving for especially in healthcare because those days are long gone and healthcare is such a very strict um, regulated industry because we are taking care of lives and 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 we have to be careful we have to make sure we're doing the right thing so you have to have uh, a point where you are uh, in visibility that you are known you are known for having a great experience you know and keep it simple we want our customers to have a great experience you want to be known for that you want to have the credibility and so therefore you want to be respected for that and then you also want to have the recommendation which is the outreach you got to outreach and get the recommendation and so making the connection with the three you want to close that gap and make the connection making sure your brand has visibility credibility and outreach um, and again you want to be known respected and recommended so a lot of hospitals sometimes shy away from social media and I can understand a little bit. Um, however, there's over 300, well over 300 social media networks and your staff, they're on them. Your patients are on them. Your stakeholders are on them. Your community advocates are on them. They're on a lot of social networks. You have to make sure that the conversations that are crossing these social networks are positive, that you're being respected, you're being known, and you're being recommended in the right way. Social media is a B2C uh, platform. However, you can convert and, and merge social media to be a B2B if you employ the right type of strategies to stop it from being this massive marketing, but you want to get in there and have a conversation. People are, there's, there's telehealth, there's teledocs. Social media and technology is a benchmark it's a necessity so now don't run from it but embrace it and so how do we embrace it strategically you put a, a strategy together that says how are we going to incorporate our brand into social media and keep it clean and keep it with integrity we still want to make sure we're doing the right things and giving people and your staff parameters and and but also guidance and how to to really get down and roll down this road because social media isn't going anywhere uh, every time we turn around there's another social media network popping up now I'm not saying that you need to be on all of the social networks I'm saying that we need to look at which social networks you need to be on and cultivating that network and cultivating the conversation 
on the network. So engaging your customers and your patients and your staff on social media is, and you do it you know, with parameters is going to be more of a benefit than a loss. You can also get great feedback and conversation. You get real-time conversation and feedback. I guarantee you that regardless of what's happening, patients are, you can't stop the patients from having a conversation on social media. You can't stop them from posting a picture. You can't stop because that it's, social media is a microphone. It's been a platform for people to communicate and showcase and to share. I mean, it is. It's it's huge. So instead of running from it, embrace it. You can encourage it, but and and but you can guide what's happening. And so be strategic about it, but embrace it. Okay. And so when you think about advancing your brand and boosting the impact of your brand, that is something to look at are we maximizing the use of our social media and um you know, with impact branding, that is a tool that we look at. And we, when we help our companies and we do our initial ins assessment, we have um, a discovery assessment or, or a one tool assessment where we look at the brand and we take an evaluation of how are you using and streamlining technology and social media and engagement because it's very important. And um, organizations and healthcare organizations that are strategically embracing social media are, are having impact and powerful brands and so most ho some hospitals some clinics some urgent care some doctor's offices some healthcare professionals in business things of this nature this is a piece of the puzzle that somehow gets underutilized or overlooked right and of course branding is important but how does branding affect your organization we've been talking about that here's what it all boils down to okay value proposition. Now we all know what value proposition is because we've used it, we, we, we look at different things, but let's, let's just break it down to an elementary level. The value proposition directly affects your brand and vice versa. Your brand affects your value proposition and value proposition affects your brand. If the amount of time, risk, change, and commitment that your consumer, your customer, your patient, your staff, your stakeholders, have to invest or lose in order to access your service is your value proposition. And if a patient comes to you and the, the, the time to access the service is, is high, the risk is high, they have to make a lot of changes in order to get access to it or they have to make some shift in their commitment, your brand is gonna be negatively affected. However, if you improve the time, reduce the risk, minimize the change and make the commitment beneficial for your consumers to access your product or service <coughs> excuse me your brand will have a positive reach and so the key behind that is you want a brand with intention because at the end of the day everything you do will affect your brand it will affect the brand equity you have, which is going to be your profitable position in the marketplace. If your brand equity is not profitable, you're going to have, already you understand you would have a lot of issues. So you have, everything drives back to the brand, the people, the service, the access to the service, the environment. How do you look on outside and how do you look on the inside? What happens when I gain access to your service? Am I respected? Am I trusted? Can I trust you? And also as a patient, am I trusted as a patient? So we have to look at the whole organization. And like I said, when we, at Impact Branding, when we start out, we do what's called a uh, one tool discovery assessment and we look at the brand overall and then we also do um, an evaluation included in the one to call a profit enhancer and we it's a software that we it's a proprietary software we have and what it does is it looks at the five core areas of any company regardless of industry size and and it does an early prediction and it looks at where the company is where it's going and how long it's going to take to get there and what's the profitable um, potential there for it and it really does give you a, a very quick window into what's happening and what's about to happen and so therefore you can make the proper adjustments in order to have a, the next quarter be a very profitable move you don't have to wait for the whole year to figure out uh oh this isn't working or we, we've had a bad response so with that being said the value proposition 
is directly tied to your brand and your branding is directly tied to your value proposition. And so if you want to advance, you know, the, the, the impact of your, your organization and your brand, you got to go back to the value proposition and go back to your branding. What do we look like? And so you have your, you know, you want to start saying, okay, we're, we're doing this with intention. We are making the right decisions. We want to make sure that we have great brand equity, right? We have great brand equity that it's going to last for a long time. So you have your customers, your consumers, right? And those consumers are going to access your product or your service, whatever it is that you're producing, the production and the delivery of the production. And the way they're going to access that is because you somehow marketed to them in some capacity. But that marketing was driven by personnel. And in order for the personnel to be there, there had to be finances to drive that. So in order to get more customers, you needed the finances to get the customers so they can access the product through the marketing that you've put in place by the personnel that you've hired through the money that you've used and it keeps going. It's a closed circle. So the value proposition has to look at, um, touch all of these areas and making sure that every decision you make is, is a very valuable decision. It's a profitable decision and it's a strategic decision. And so we have to be careful in healthcare that it doesn't, one doesn't carry the weight of the other and you don't have this slippery slope thing. Okay. So, Looking at that, let's make sure that um, from healthcare, we are we are, come down on an elementary level for a little bit and say, all right, let's pull, let's step, step back a second, pull back from the numbers, pull back from the data, and let's get very granular. What does our brand look like and what are we offering? Remember earlier when I talked about shifting your staff and your employees to brand ambassadors? Whenever you want to advance the brand of your organization, you got to start with your people first. That's where you have to start. There is a principle that we've um, been advocating for and using and we, we um, use with our clients and they've adopted it and it's been working very well. Um, it's a principle that we even offer in the new book, Unleash Your Millionaire Mindset, um, that talks about building profitable brands. And here's the key thing, you know, when you start with people, uh, our clients no longer say that we offer work-life balance. What they do is offer work-life integration. And that's the quickest way to convert your staff from being staff and mere employees to brand ambassadors. And when you convert your brand, your staff into brand ambassadors, the growth that your organization will experience, the, the position that your organization will now take, the, mark, the, cap, the market share you'll capture, and the brand equity that you will hold, I mean, it, it quadruples because now you have ambassadors as opposed to only employees. And this is a great principle to kind of look at and explore. You can always give us a call and we'll, we'll talk through that. But work-life integration is what hospitals and healthcare organizations need to strive for, not for balance. And I talk about the difference and the value in the two within our new book that um, we've released. And so when you look at it, people have to have personal balance and professional balance and community balance. And then you try to have the balance, but then you need to integrate it because we're all one. And so going back to this principle makes a huge difference in your brand. So that is one way to, one of the ways that I just shared, uh, which I shared about five different ways to boost the impact of your brand and to really advance the brand of your organization. And so, um, you know, like I said, who are we? Like I said, I'm Natasha Davis. I'm the chief branding strategist here at Impact Branding. And I have been a registered nurse um, and in the healthcare industry, worked in emergency and trauma and traveled all throughout the states, working with hospitals for over 15 years. And um, 10 years ago, when I started the company, I realized that, um, Healthcare also needed help along with other industries, and this was an area that was important, the area of branding and marketing and strategic movements. And um, that's what I bring to, you know, to healthcare and really advancing the competitive edge and through different trainings and through uh, services and um, consulting and things like that. And so for 10 years, I've been in, uh, in the business side of healthcare, helping organizations to really advance their company and to, to get hold of this crazy thing called branding and crazy thing called marketing and how to apply it 
without segmenting it and, and uncomplicated. And so I love what I do. But through our different trainings and our programs and our services, we do uh, we look at brand equity enhancement and those strategic uh, marketing techniques, how to build a team and convert staff to brand ambassadors, um, really how to position your leaders to be very effective and forward moving and forward thinking in the organization. And even to the point of preparing the organization for audits. How do you get the organization ready for an audit so that you constantly are winning? It's all tied into branding. There's no way to separate them, even though many have many continue to try, but they spend a lot of money trying to separate branding and they end up coming right back to the same print. We got to incorporate branding and marketing into what we're doing. And so that is the, the bit of it. I just wanted to do a quick power hour, give you some information and you have the website impactbrandingconsulting.org. Uh, our phone number is there. If you'd like to have a conversation with us and just kind of explore some of the options that we have, we'd be more than happy to speak with you. And I hope this webinar has been extremely helpful and beneficial and you learned something and you can take it back and apply it in your organization. And if you want to have a brand one assessment just to kind of look and see, you know, what's happening and where are we and what can we do to make in some different improvements, we'd be more than happy to help you. Give us a call at the number that's on the screen, uh, 678-390-2681. And we'll go ahead and have a conversation to help you out. And so I see that, um, you know, there's a few thank yous and so forth in the chat room and you're more than welcome. I'm happy that you were able to break away to, you know, pop in and get this information. I know it's hard. It's a very busy day. That's why we try to do it at lunchtime. Um, and if you know any by one of your colleagues that would benefit. We are hosting the webinar again in a few short days on July uh, 6th and at 1230 as well. So we'll be more than happy to deliver the information again. Okay. All right. So again, I'm Natasha Davis. I'm the chief branding strategist here at Impact Branding. And I just want to spend a little bit of time to help our healthcare understand how to advance your healthcare brand and to make a difference in the community, make that global footprint. All right. All right. You guys have a fabulous uh, day and have a great uh, weekend. And I will talk to you when we talk.